Got to tell you a little bit about the blues.
from a thousand generations of province and starvation. I'm the underdog of the United Nations. I'm the only man that the world knows. Ain't got no woman, got no place to go. Well, to me, the blues are the facts of life that's expressed in songs. And if you'll notice, all of the blues songs are facts of life. Uh, they are the facts of either the past, or of the present, or of the future. But they are all the facts of life. There ain't nothing I can do. No. If you leave, leave me to cry. Did you hear the song Otis Rush made about my love will never die? As long as men and women love each other, that would be a blues because uh, they'll have various misunderstandings and they'll have understanding. And all of the blues. Uh, built around the facts of life. And this is why people feel like they're dying because nobody wants to face the fact. Everybody wants to, if it's a fact, whatever it is, they wants to put a little sugar around it and make it a little different, you know. And uh, they don't want to face the actual fact of anything. Blues won't never die. It might be dying in one place, but it's just like a germ. It's always back in another. Baby, don't you know I love you so? Take me back, baby. Promise I won't stay out late no more. Say that. Baby, won't you please come on back home? Promise I will never do you wrong. One more time. Blues might never die, but the situation in America doesn't look especially promising. The younger generation is more interested in disco and rock. The older blues players are slowly disappearing from the scene. In Europe, however, a blues concert can still draw a large crowd. Three separate groups hosted by Willie Dixon and calling themselves the new generation of Chicago blues were the star attraction of the 1977 Berlin Jazz Festival. Say that, baby, won't you please come back tonight? Oh, Lord, say it. Baby, won't you please come back tonight? If you come back, baby, I'll make everything all right Say that Baby, don't you know I love you so Oh, Lord, say that Baby, 
don't you know I love you so? If you come back home tonight, baby, as long as I won't get drunk no more. The people in Chicago don't even treat you like the people in, in Germany treat you, for instance, you know. When I went to Germany, man, that was completely different, a completely different atmosphere, man. The people love you, man. I love the people, man, you know. Yeah, it really, really, you know, applause, man, does, a, a, does really does something for a musician, man, an entertainer that's out there. If the people applaud for you, man, you work hard. You know, you work your bottom off, man. The first quarter of this century witnessed a massive migration of Afro-Americans, lured from the southern states to the industrial centers of the north with the promise of work and a better standard of living. A new record market became available. The small increase in salary, compared to the pittance earned in the south, was sufficient to enable the urban blacks to buy the latest blues hit. The living conditions of the Afro-Americans, however, were and still are appalling. In Chicago, the gleaming downtown skyscrapers and the panoramic Lakeshore Drives are surrounded on the south and west sides by the Black Ghetto. Check this out. When you're down, you know. You're feeling real weary Come on over To the place where I work And all of your loneliness I try to soothe I play the blue for you afraid Walk right on it If I'm gonna cross Yeah, yeah Some of your old friends And all your loneliness I'll try to soothe I'll play the blues for you
got no big name. Whoa, Lord, I ain't no star. Uh -uh. But I feel the blues for you on this here crutch guitar. Chicago was the city where country blues came to town and were revolutionized, the revolution still plays on today, with three distinct generations of musicians at work. The traditions are not ignored, but constantly updated as young musicians work their way into the business. The time and place to see and hear them is in any one of the bars, politely referred to as clubs, on the south and west sides of Chicago, especially on a Monday. Chicago Blue Monday is when the musicians play for each other, exchange songs, and fantasize about their careers. Junior Wells, for example, one of Chicago's most popular harmonica players can be found at Teresa's. because it goes one way. It's a basic thing called, if you like your woman, goddamn it, act nice about it. Don't act no goddamn fool. Yeah, you always gotta push that shit. Itself is, is important to a, to a person that, that can get over to the people, you know, that, that can uh, get, his, get his music played. Uh, they can, a person could just live in Chicago forever and, and don't ever have to go nowhere else and work forever if the radio will play their record. You understand? If, the, if they'll play your music, man, the people will like it, man, because like, like right here in this studio right here, man, we cut some beautiful records, some beautiful songs, man, and take them to the radio, we can't get them played, you know? My father took a record to the people at the station, and they told him that they don't make hits. 
they play hits. So that means they weren't gonna play his record. We live in this city, man, and pay our taxes here and everything, man. The kids go to school here and everything, like buy your food in Chicago and everything, man. Pay your taxes for parking and on cars and on everything. Anything you buy, you pay your taxes, but you still can get the radio station to play your music. Ironically, it's only when the musicians break out of Chicago that they have any realistic chance of earning money and becoming a success. The younger generation of blues players might appear in the clubs at night, but they earn their living during the day as construction site worker, post office sorter, L operator, or taxi driver. People. In the summer of 69, I didn't smoke no reefer, I didn't drink no wine. When the song was over, I was a chain man. I can turn off a bottle. you feel is a feeling, man. See, if you feel it, they, if you feel it, the people, your audience is gonna feel it. You know, if you just sitting up there playing something mechanical, like scale, they're playing scales, anybody can do that. And you could play badly, but if you have feeling, it's better than mm -hmm. playing well and having no feeling. Yeah, like, I know a guy that plays guitar, at least he tries, he doesn't even play. All he, you know what he does, he squeezes one note. He's just squeezing, that's all, did two strings, that's all he does. And he can't sing or nothing. He throw the guitar on the floor and stomp it, do like that with his feet, put his foot on it. And the people love that. You know, that's his act. You know, that's not rehearsed or nothing. That's what that's just what he feels. He don't do the same thing when you get up there every time. Now that's BB King. 
I learned that off the record. That's technical. I don't have to feel that to play that. But when I get down in the solo, I'm playing the same song. When I get down in the solo and I'm playing, I play. <laughs> top player you get that know how to play, has heard that song the thrill is gone and has tried to play it they you tell them to play play the thrill is gone they're gonna start off just like that because that's the way bb king did it that's on the record learn it off the record interprets a blues song as being sorrowful or melancholic. The floating notes, one of the more important characteristics of blues music, were, however, originally used by the Afro-Americans to denote a deep feeling or strong emotion, not necessarily a sad emotion. This misinterpretation is reinforced by the dictionary definition of the expression to have the blues to be dispirited or melancholic. There ain't nothing I can do If you leave me here to cry There ain't nothing I can do Sometimes you have to have uh, something to generate that feeling. And when you find that thing that generates that feeling, it's just like a battery it can be sitting up there dead. But if you put a generator to it that can generate the energy into this battery, it will give that battery life and it gets a new life and a new feeling. This is the way it is about the blues. When the feeling of the blues has been generated into an individual, it gives him a new life and a new feeling within himself. Now, one of the ways to generate this particular feeling is someone to come up singing and expressing a part of your life that you know is a fact. Now, when you know this is a fact and someone expressing it with feeling, it naturally it generates a feeling in you. I say anybody can have the blues if it's generated into them. I'm gonna leave it up to you So long, so long goodbye I'm gonna leave it up to you So long, so long goodbye
school, you know. But uh, I got my first guitar when I was 12 years old. And uh, uh, my parent, my people that I was staying with, my uncle and aunt, they, uh, they had a friend that played guitar for Coco Taylor. You know, his name was Leo something. I don't, I don't remember his full name, but anyway, he used to come around the house and have his guitar, and he'd be in there playing, you know, by himself. Sometimes he'll bring a bass man with him and they'll play. The guy was playing upright, upright bass then, you know. And they'll play the blues, and that's all he was playing was the blues. So I got interested in it then, you know. And I started to mess around with my little guitar trying to play. So I finally learned, when I first learned how to play, first thing I was playing was the blues, yes. <laughs> That's, that's the first thing I learned how to play on guitar. I never took a lesson to play guitar, nothing like that. It, it was just, God gave it to me, you know. God gave me my talent. My father was a musician. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, it wasn't fortunate enough like the rest of the fellas. My father didn't just go out and buy me a guitar. Then he didn't allow me to play his guitar. So I wait till he leave home and I pick up the guitar and I start playing it. But he always know I played it because he'd be out of tune and stuff, you know, like. So I got about maybe 12, 13, then he started letting me play. My first, my first instrument was a harmonica. from feeling. You know, I learned by myself. I sat around the crib, uh, around the house, <laughs> in my room, and played, you know, mostly by myself. Uh, I couldn't play just with other people around me. I had to get alone in the room by myself and feel it. I could feel it more. I played by feeling. That's the only way I could play. was a young boy, about the age of five. My mother said I was going to be the greatest man alive. Now that I'm a man, way past 21, you wouldn't believe it, baby. I have lots of fun. I'm a hoochie-coochie man.
I don't think it is a lot of blues in Chicago. Because, you know, it used to be that you could go anywhere and find good blues being played, you know. But now you have to go way on the north side, you know. There's not too many clubs on the south side that's featuring blues like it used to be. You know, that's because all of the, the older guys that were playing the blues then, they're either gone or they're going, you know. So, uh, like, really, it's not too many of them left, you know, that, that can really play the blues good. And I think it's up to the, to the younger generation, you know, to uh, pick this up, you know, to play the blues, you know, because the blues, is a, the blues started it all, you know, started everything. All of this stuff, disco, rock, all of it did, came from the blues. <laughs> People have the blues not only in Chicago but everywhere, but they have a different way of expressing it. In Chicago today, the blues have changed to a certain extent. They changed the beat of the blues. It used to be a time the blues was considered as a 12 bar music, and that's all. It's just like an automobile changes, you know, in the States and the other places. They change the style of the automobiles all the time. And it not, it's not always a better idea, and it's not always a worse. But at the same time, it's different. And when it's different, that makes it the same, the same car, the same name, but just a different body that carries the same place and do the same thing the other one did. Might go a little faster, a little slower, might burn a little more gas or a little less gas, but it's the same automobile and it's used for the same purpose. Mama, 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 talk to your daughter for me. I said, Mama, 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 talk to your daughter for me. She made me a lover and I ain't gonna let her be. Mama, talk to your daughter. 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 She
two, three. rhythm to get together. I want everybody to set a groove. Right. After you set the groove, you can taste it. Right. And then you fall in it. I, in I, I want you to come in just like you did no, with the other thing, but don't listen to me. Let me explain it then, will you please? Uh, I want you to do it just like you were doing at first, but you're just doing an octave of the same identical chord. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. You think you can find it? Yeah. Hey. 